Hi everyone. I hope you're all doing okay. Yeah, so I just thought I'd update you about what happened when I went to saw my rheumatologist. If you've watched my previous video, I decided that I wanted to still take Paclodil even though my chronic fatigue has improved immensely and with it my brain fog um, that I would still take Paclodil just in case it stopped any other symptoms of Sjogren's or made all the chronic fatigue go away or if it just stopped things in its track or you know didn't make Sjogren's progress more. So I went and I have to say it's so nice when you find a nice rheumatologist and I have been seeing rheumatologists since I don't know I, I don't want to say I think 2017 but anyway it's been a while and originally the doctors thought I had a uh, polymyalgia PMR um, it, it, I couldn't walk I couldn't do anything and I was referred to this rheumatologist she wasn't sure that I had PMR she said that some of the signs were not what PMR was and she was lovely though she was so on it and she was informative she was lovely she saw me a couple of times and then uh, she left the hospital so I ended up uh, seeing this man who was, I don't know what I call him, he was like the head of the department or whatever, but he was terrible. I saw him about four years ago and uh, I went in and he didn't let me speak. I don't think I was even there for one minute. He just said something like, yeah, we should do these uh, muscle tests on you and I'm not going to talk about anything until those tests are done. And that was it. And nobody even nobody ever contacted me about any tests so that was that so anyway it's been a long haul <laughs> but the last time i saw this lovely lady and i really did uh, ask her a lot of questions and she was so patient and i was praying i'd see her again and i did so i was really happy so it was quite a short appointment she thought that i had done really well with the whole chronic fatigue thing and how I've been researching things and she said that I've been such a great advocate for myself and it just shows that it's just something that we have to work on ourselves and also get help from our doctors, specialists, rheumatologists but if there's some things that we find, we need to tell them because I, I just feel like they don't know everything and I feel like it just has to be like a two-way co communication and maybe something that we figure out and we tell them might be helpful for somebody else that they see. They might say, oh, you know, so-and-so tried this. And Anyway, so I said to her, yeah, I'd like to try Paclodil. She said that's a good idea. I think she called it a soft, a soft medication, soft drug where she said that it's not going to affect the immune system. Yeah, and she was happy to do that. But then she said that she would like to do one more test. And then after that, um, we could like talk again. And the test was, oh, was it called EMG? Let me write. Yeah, and maybe some of you are uh, familiar with it. No, I totally forgot what EMG stands for. So let me look it up. Oh. It is electromyography, measures muscle response or electrical activity in response to a nerve stimulation of the muscle. The test is used to help detect neuromuscular abnormalities. Ugh, during the test, one or more sm small needles, also called electrodes, are inserted through the skin into the muscle. Okay, I don't want to look at that. I can't, I can't stand needles. If I have to have a blood test, I have to look the other way. I'll be fine if I just look the other way. Oh, I get woozy even talking about it. Anyway, oh. and she said that usually if there is inflammation in the muscles, they can tell this through blood tests. But she said on very rare occasions, it doesn't show up in blood tests. And that's why, because I have muscle pain and aches and, and stiffness and all those kind of things, she she wanted to just rule it out completely or well or see if i have it she said that if the test is a bit unsure as well then she wants me to do an mri because my chronic fatigue 
fatigue and uh, brain fog are better, that she, uh, but my aches and pains are ha have not improved. Um, she would rather sort those out first. If I do have whatever she's looking for, which I'm not sure, I did Google to see if you have Sjogren's, what kind of muscle issues uh, you'd have that you would have to do this test. I forgot what I came up with, and I think it's on my iPad, which I'm filming from, so I can't look at it now. But if anybody has had this test, or if they know what they're looking for, please do let me know in the comments. Um, if you've had the test, how does it feel for you? What kind of muscle issues you have? So yeah, she said that she would just she wants to check the uh, the inflammation of the muscles. So I haven't been able to have Plaquenil. It's like such a struggle to get Plaquenil. Um, yeah, so she thinks that there would be a better medication for the muscle pains if rather than Plaquenil. So, so that was that. It was a bit of an anticlimax. With it's worth mentioning that there was another thing I asked her um, because that's the part that worries me and I don't know if it worries anybody else but I'm sure it does is you know how shortcuts can progress or it can affect your organs and I don't want to be negative um, but I think it's good to be aware of all the things that could happen because of Sjogren's. Um, in my first video, I talked about Sjogren's and all the things that could happen, including, you know, the cancers and all that. In fact, I just said lymphoma, but uh, since then I've noticed that people are saying we're prone to quite a few other cancers. But, but I don't want to, uh, you know, be negative, but I just feel like we have to look after ourselves and we have to watch out for things and we have to try to prevent as much as we can and we have to, if we have any signs of anything, Please don't be afraid if of anything, like if you have a sign of something, tell your GP, ask them to do tests, don't put it off. Yeah, but what I did say to her is, I asked her, you know, how, how do we know if uh, right now I'm here and I've got Sjogren's and how do I know that it's affecting my, I don't know, my uh, kidneys? How do I know if it's affecting my liver? And can we keep an eye on it by doing tests? I mean, how often do we do these tests? Um, because I'm, I'm trying to think how often I see my rheumatologist. So right now we're in the 31st of May and I got an email saying the next time the rheumatology team are gonna see me is November. So that's July, August, September, October, and November. That's five months. Also, the last time I saw this lovely doctor, she said that she would do tests I don't know how many months ago that was, probably three or four months ago, and she forgot. So I reminded her at the end of this, um, we took blood tests this time. So, yeah. I, so I just said to her, how, how do we know? But she said it's basically uh, about how you're feeling, that uh, if things are affecting you, you'd, you would know or they would know from how you're feeling. And that's why I'm saying, please, if you're feeling really, really bad, talk to your doctors, ask to see rheumatologists, ask for tests to be done. If you have pains anywhere, ask them. Don't just think, oh, I've got fibromyalgia, for example, so I am bound to have pains. If it's something new, if it's something that's bothering you, if it's something that hurts, talk to your GP and tell them you want tests done. Don't put things off. And she listed a few things, which I noted down, one was if you can't use your hands, if you have a skin rash, uh, the blood test with the inflammatory markers can say something. If you're sweating at night, if, you ha if you're losing weight, those were a few things that she said. So that was that. What else? I also wanted to just quickly mention, yeah, so I put this binder together when I was like, had really bad chronic fatigue and also uh, brain fog, really bad brain fog, because I just wanted everything in one place so I wouldn't be looking all over the place for them. And I promised myself that I would do so much research and put it all in here, which I never did. Um, and I really, really want to work on this soon. So basically what I did is I got a binder, it was an old binder I, I had in the house, and um, I was gonna write more than this, but I'll just show you. Um, so I put my symptoms, my blood results, and correspondence, 
like basically any test results and correspondence. What is Sjogren's? That was for me to get on, get on top of it and to know exactly what it is. Like I, and then I put something for eyes, mouth, and I think I was going to do different things that I never finished it. Though, um, looking at it, yeah, and I did put like, gosh, I put a lot of stuff here. Uh, yeah, so I had like different pieces of paper where I had written symptoms throughout the years and I thought it's a good idea to put them all in here so then I can look at them. I mean, even like, for example, this is 2019 where I had gone for stomach pains uh, to see a specialist at UCL and they thought that I had fibromyalgia then and I only got diagnosed with fibromyalgia a few months ago. Um, so it's interesting when you have a look at the history and you just see signs of things that have been happening. And then I put all my appointments, I put all the blood tests that were, I don't know, I can't remember why I've got some of them printed somehow. And there's an ECG here. I even put my PIP application. That's a different story. They're not giving me PIP. And I will one day write, uh, do a video on that because it was really interesting. What they said and how, why they wouldn't give it to me. Very interesting. I could go to tribunal, but I can't be bothered with them anymore. They're driving me nuts. They make me so angry. I was so bad when I applied for that. And I still am, like, I can't have a nine to five full-time job. I don't think I could even work one day a week right now, even though my chronic fatigue is so much better. My brain uh, is so much better, but it's still not great. Uh, my friend wanted me to help them set up their broadband. I couldn't even look at the instructions. I just looked at the instructions and it, it was just stressed me out. I, it was kind of like, oh my God, what am I looking at? It was just, and I had to ask him to read it. I had a kidney infection a couple of weeks ago and it took me longer to get over it than I think than anybody else would. And also it's made me a little bit more chronic fatigue, a, a little bit more fatigued. And it's also affected my brain fog a bit as well. So the last week has been noticeably bad. I felt really bad because my mom was asking, I, all I was doing was helping her um, order some flowers for her friend. And I was getting so stressed trying to just order some flowers online. And I thought, and I had to say to her mom, just uh, hold on a minute. And I had to double check everything seriously about six times. Like I could tell she was thinking, what is wrong with you? The old me, before last year, was the person that everybody would come to and ask, oh, could you sort this out for me? Could you talk to this person? Could you write this letter for me? And I'm not that person anymore. I, so yeah, oh yeah, mouth, like I've written about d different things that would help with your dry mouth, like what kind of gums to have. What else have I put in here? There's a couple of health clinics that I want to look into. So they're in here. God knows what I could ever afford them though. Um, but sometimes their pamphlets have useful things in them. Yeah, anyway, um, so I just thought maybe, you know, to suggest that you guys do the same. And what I was going to do, the couple of appointments back with rheumatology when nobody was sure what I had, and every time I went, they wouldn't even know what my notes were. I was going to take this binder with me. I did. I did take this binder with me, but I didn't have to use it. And another thing, if you're in the UK and you, if you don't have this already, let me just find it, do uh, get the NHS app. It's so good. If you don't have it, get it. I think you have to apply for online access with your GP and then you can get everything on here. I need, I can look at blood test results on here before my doctors have even had a chance to tell me what they are. And what's great is that you can do your own comparisons. You can look at what your ESR was, you know, uh, last year compared to the year before. 
Anyway, this video has been very all over the place. I hope that it's been helpful in some way. And if it hasn't, I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, thank you so much for watching and wishing you all a lovely um, evening, day,